Hello, writers. Welcome to work three of our week three of our workshop on revision. I'm going to shift gears a little bit this week and take us in a little bit of a different direction. I love William Zinser. I love his work, um, but I was feeling dissatisfied with how um, his techniques were fitting our purposes in the workshop. So I um, picked up uh, Sandra Pearl and Mimi Schwartz's book called Writing True, The Art and Craft of Writing Creative Nonfiction. And, um, and taking some cues from them on revision and wanted to share them with you. I think these might be more pertinent for us as we move forward. Um, so this week I want to talk about the situation and the story. Vivian Gornick in her book, The Situation and the Story, said that every bit of writing um, has really two, two dynamic, two, how do I want to say, two plot lines or two stories going on. There's the, the situation, which is, your who, what, where, when, why, um, it's the plot, it's the, it's the context of what has happened. It's actually kind of the easiest thing to write. It's just sort of the facts of what happened. But then behind every situation, there is what Gornick calls the story, which is its own sort of like plot line that rises and falls on its own wave. Um, and it is a little more elusive than the situation because it's not as concrete. However, it's really significant for success. The story is about um, the emotional experience of us as the narrator and the writer and what sense we make of the situation. And I think that is a really clear distinction to make. There's the situation, which is the who, what, where, when, why, the facts. But then there's the story. And the story is the larger sense we make of that situation and that experience. What meaning do we attribute to it or take from it? Um, let's, how else does she say? Oh, I have it in the handout for you. She says, the situation is the context or circumstance, sometimes the plot. The story is the emotional experience that preoccupies the writer, the insight, the wisdom, the thing one has come to say. Um, the story for the readers is the why it explains to the readers why the situation matters and is significant. So I think it's important, um, as I've been reading some of your essays and thinking about giving you feedback, uh, I think this is a really great exercise for us to, to, to look at our work and to separate out not just the situation, but also the story. What is the emotional resonance behind it? What's the meaning of it that, that we want the readers to take away? And so you'll see in the handout, I've included a picture of um, Picasso's drawings of a bull, bull. And he, over the course of these drawings, simplifies and simplifies and simplifies this bull down to what he believes are its most key parts, the most essential parts of the bull. Can buy my game on Nano TV? Yeah, just a minute. Let me finish what I'm doing, please. Okay. Um, the joys of working at home over the summer. <laughs> Um, just trying to fit this in quickly. Just a minute. Just a minute. Um, so anyway, so I want you to look at this procession of drawings, progression of drawings, and I want you to see how this impacts you as a viewer. Um, and ask yourself by the last picture, in what way has Picasso captured the story of the bull? And what key strokes has he used to, to um, convey that? And then I want us to try this with our writing. I want you to either take the writing you generated in week one or another piece of writing that you have. And I want you to sit down and read it again. And I want you to pull apart what is the situation, the plot, the who, what, where, when, and why, the facts. And I want you to see what's sort of hovering beneath it. It requires a, an act of imagination. And I don't mean like wizards and fairies and fantasy. I mean imagination and being able to perceive what is there that is not immediately evident. You have to be able to sort of hover over it and, and see what the significance of the story is, what the major themes are of the story um, that's really pressing through uh, what you're writing. And then I want you to see if you can do what Picasso did and capture the essence of your story in just a few brief strokes. I'm gonna give you four sentences, four to five sentences, a paragraph. See if you can distill down, not the situation, not the plot, but distill down the emotional resonance of the piece into four or five sentences. Probably I should make you do it even less than that. But once you can get a hold of that, then what you're going to find is that is your compass as you start to rewrite. You start to see things in the plot you don't need that you can cut out, phrases, words, bits of dialogue, 
plot points that aren't necessary and that, um, that sort of distract from the heart of the piece. So that's your work for this week. All you're going to be generating for this week is a single paragraph that you're going to put into the folder for week three. And we're going to read and give you feedback on that and then see how that helps you with revisions as you go into week four. All right, let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in the workshop.